I want to get, try to um, pretty much um, conclude with the um, home base because I think home based business insurance is something that I see a lot of businesses start off. They have a lot of technical skill, but they usually don't have space or the funding to, to uh, a lot of capital to, to go out and buy office space. So they try to start in their, in their home and they try to expand as they get bigger. And in a home based insurance, you have to deal with the workers' compensation insurance. It's required if you have employees, regardless of whether you're working at home or you're working in a, in a in your um in your in outside office it covers employees claims and which we said before and exempt from eligibility business owners and, and these types of individuals we said the property and liability insurance homeowners renters is rarely enough so you need to be careful about um, having your home based insurance be covered by your homeowners policy and property and liability insurance options you can get an endorsement on your homeowners policy which adds which add the coverage to it, and I think that's probably the cheapest way to, to get that done. And you can increase standard coverage for business equipment. And the, the one thing that we'd like to, and, and this, on this particular slide I think is important, is the business owner policy, because it's a package of home, of, your, of all of the different coverages in one product. And I think it's very important to get that done, and it's cheaper that way. And obviously we discussed earlier about business interruption and that can happen in your home based business as well as if your business is, is a, of, of decent size. Don't assume that your homeowners and renters policy will cover all your business costs because it won't. And um, in auto insurance we discuss you know, when you have a home owners, when you have a home business and, and most people think that um, I'm transporting people, I'm doing commercial coverage type, I'm a commercial type of uh, of things that is going to be uh, covered by my, my personal property, my personal auto coverage, and it's not going to be covered by that. And some of the tips are, you know, if your business owns or leases vehicles, you know, make sure you list the name as a, as a principal insured. If you're relying on personal auto insurance or personal umbrella coverage, um, look closely at the, at the policy and make sure you understand what, are, what is and what is not included in your policy. And if employees operate companies' cars, make sure that you have, they have a good driving record. And we went... And then the health insurance particular provisions that relate to homeowners relate to the other side as we went to the health as well. But the one thing that's here that's really different is consider COBRA as an interim solution. COBRA is if you leave your, your business, you have 90 days of coverage from your, from your previous employer and you have to pay the total amount of insurance, but it's much cheaper than you going out and getting individual coverage. And, and, and Washington has developed a move that 120 days to six months because we have a DC COBRA process. So it gives you a six month window to still be on um, your previous employer's health coverage. And it says check with your state insurance department to see if there are any special assistance for small business. And obviously with what Eric Moses and what Harold are doing, you need to make sure you understand that. And um, we discussed the, um, the life insurance process um, pretty much in detail. But um, make sure you understand what key person insurance is, especially if you have a small business and it's one or two major um, principal um, business owners. And, and all this information about what affects premiums and, and life insurance, um, what we, we've been putting out consumer tips on our website about these different things, and I think it's important that we get that done.